So today I'm gonna show you my Hunter ceiling fan installation. And I also bought a three foot long down rod. So I'm gonna tell you how that mounts onto it. Just in case you don't already know, before you mount this bracket on your ceiling, make sure that your box is rated for a ceiling fan. You don't wanna install it on one that's only designed for a light because that could come down and you know, you don't want your fan to fall down. Let's get started. So this fan came with this little, I think it's three inch down rod. So how you transfer these parts over to the extension is, first you remove this screw. And once that screw is removed, this comes out. All right, I've transferred the pieces over. So it's just this plastic collar and this grounding strap. It's held on by a screw. And once you have the plastic piece over, you can put the pin through the holes. And then you make sure that the grooves line up. All right, and then now we can put the set screw back in. All right, the set screw will hold this assembly in place. And if you're wondering about if you needed any extra wire, on this fan and probably other Hunter fans, it'll come with about 69 inches of wire. So for the three foot down rod, that is more than enough. So the next thing I'm gonna do is mount this bracket up onto the box up there. My ceiling is 16 feet, so I needed to use this 14 foot ladder. So the way that this bracket holds is you get your motor mounted on there. This is a threaded end which is secured by this set screw. And there's also red thread locker on here. So this end goes in here. And basically just hangs like that. Oh, before I move on with the installation, I'm gonna just give you an overview of what came with it. So this is a Wi-Fi model, so that's kind of cool. It has this QR code on top of the fan that you can scan, it's, and it's also on the manual. So some of the other pieces that it came with are the screws that hold the blade on, some wire nuts, balancing kit. This cover goes on top of the bracket, and it comes with a remote as well. And your remote can control various functions. And the blades come in a nice silver or wood. And it came with some LED bulbs too. These are 800 lumen. I'll probably put some 100 watt equivalents into it. So with the motor, you mount this plate onto it. And then the light goes inside of that. And then the light cover goes on top of that. Wow, 14 feet. Looks interesting up here. I'm gonna use these screws that have the uh, star nut. That'll prevent them from backing out on their own. And as always, before you work on anything electrical, make sure you have the power shut off. You don't wanna shock yourself or electrocute yourself. And again, make sure that the box is rated for a ceiling fan. You don't want to mount it on one that's rated for only a light because it may not be strong enough to hold a ceiling fan. Okay, so here we have the bracket installed on the box on the ceiling now. I also wanted to show you these wire nuts that I like to use. They're called lever nuts by Wago and it's as simple as putting the wire in and just flipping this lever. They're so much more easy to use than regular wire nuts. And the clear ones, 
but you see if the wire is in all the way. And at first I wasn't sure if I could trust these, but then on YouTube I found a video of someone running a current test through these. And I could not believe how much current that you can run through these before they even start showing a problem. And once I saw that video, I was convinced. So I use these for everything now. They're so much easier to use and you don't have to worry about twisting your wires all up and it provides a very secure connection. So with that Hunter fan, that specific model, it only needs one power connection. So I put a lever nut on here just to keep it from touching anything else. And then we're just gonna use the hot, neutral, and the ground. I just wanted to show you how I got the wires through the pole. I tried to just push them in, but they, they would keep getting stuck in the middle. So what I ended up doing was using this stick and I taped the wires to the end of it. And that made it really easy to get it all the way in. This is a rod from uh, blinds. Once we get the wires pulled out from the other end, we'll just thread this rod in here and then tighten the set screw. I just decided to check the manual to see if I needed to align the hole on the down rod with the the uh, set screw, and it does not say anything about that. It just says to remove the set screw, install the down rod, cut the wires at eight inches, and then tighten the set screw with the pliers, and not by hand. But when I was checking that, I also noticed that they want you to use these two washers to install the bracket. So that's part of this kit. These two are optional for installing the, the ceiling bracket if your, your box doesn't have um, the machine screws. So that's what those are for. So we won't be using them in this installation. But I'm gonna go ahead and remove the nuts and put these washers in. Okay, I have put the washers on the screws here. I just tightened the set screw and I decided to just go ahead and line up that hole on the down rod with the set screw. So the set screw is into the hole right now, so there is no way that this rod is going to turn. The set screw has been tightened with pliers. I've just trimmed the wires to about 8 inches and you can trim it to about the same length as this ground wire that's coming out of here because that's about 8 inches long. So I made them all the same length. And the next step is to strip the wires of their insulation. And if you have a tool like this, it would make it a lot easier. All you have to do is just put it up inside here, and then it's stripped. So for this insulation, we will be installing it using the single switch method. So the blue wire coming out of the fan isn't used, so it will be capped. So now that I have the down rod attached, I can just take it and we'll just go up the ladder and hang it on the bracket. Okay, so once you've gone up to your bracket, all you have to do is just put it in. That's it. Okay, I did something silly. I forgot to put this on the down rod before I put it up there. So I'm gonna take it back down and just slip the cover over. So the cover just slips over all of that. And now that I have it on there, I can put this back up here. And once you have all the wires neatly tucked away, you can put the cover on and it's held on by these two screws, one on this side and one on the other. So for installing the blades, we'll be using these screws and washers. Okay, so that's what the fan looks like with the blades installed. Next, we'll install this piece using three of these screws. All right, so those screws go right here. Next, we'll install the light using the remaining three screws. And before you mount it, make sure you connect the wires 
There's two of them and they just snap together. Now that the light kit is installed, we can go ahead and mount the cover. So the cover just goes on and you twist it to lock it in place. And when you turn the cover, make sure you hold this because if you only turn the cover, it's held on only by that rod in the very inside and you might risk turning it, loosening something or twisting something. So make sure you hold the this part while you turn the glass cover. So here's what the finished product looks like. Looks pretty good. Pretty happy with it. And this 14 foot ladder was the perfect height for this 16 foot ceiling. All right, I've finished the final part of the installation. I put the switch in, have it turned on, turn the power back on. And I mounted the remote to the wall using the included drywall anchors. It also comes with the uh, 3M command strip. That's the removable double-sided tape if you wanted to just use tape to install it. So let's turn it on and check it out. So it gives a beep to let you know it received a signal. And then pressing the light, turns the light on. And then it comes with this guide here you can use. So a long press of the light button can activate the dimming function, which I put some LED bulbs in there that are non-dimming, so I'm going to have to remove those and put the light bulbs that came with the fan on there. All right. So a long press up turns the fan on high, long press down turns it to low. Holding down the fan button reverses it. So yeah, I like it. Looks nice. The remote looks good. And as you can hear, it makes no sound. And that polished nickel down rod matches the silver quite nicely. I was initially worried that the down rod would be too shiny or too chrome-like compared to the matte silver finish of the fan, but when installed, it does not look shiny at all. But yeah, overall, I like the fan a lot and too bad I can't demonstrate the Wi-Fi functionality right now. I don't have a network in this house right now. But if you have any questions, feel free to comment below. And hope this helps someone. And thanks for watching.